Today is January 1st, 2023. It's also the first day that I, uh, I'm, I'm not eating sugar or trying, trying to limit my sugar intake. I don't know how long or how successful this venture will be, but... There's, a, there's not a whole lot going on today. We're, uh, we're leaving for California in two days. And because of that, we're just trying to... Uh, we're trying to take it easy today and tomorrow just because the the first half of the uh we're going to be gone in california for 15 days and the first half of the trip is going to be like work stuff so because of that we're uh we're trying not to overdo it today or tomorrow and the reason i'm telling you that is just so you know today's vlog is going to probably be more of a chill laid back at home kind of vlog. Uh, I'm a firm believer in setting expectations up and uh, I, I, I'm trying to, I'm doing that for, for you today. Also, I, uh, I have, <laughs> today is the last day of the shorts that I have like ready to go to, to post. So if I'm gonna do anything today, it's gonna be export more shorts so that I can continue this like four times a day kind of post, uh, yeah, so that has to get done today. There's there's no room for, there's wiggle room for everything else in today's vlog, but for, for that, this one thing, that there's no, zero wiggle room. So there's this one thing in my studio that's probably one of my favorite things in, in the entire studio. It, it's small, but I love it so much. If you see this, this rack mounted thing, this is my interface, well, power conditioner interfaces, and another power conditioner. This powers the entire studio. And if you know anything about uh, power or just interface or anything like that, you're probably questioning why I have not one but two power conditioners. And there's a re there's a simple reason for that. So this top power conditioner powers these two interfaces right here, and this bottom power conditioner basically powers everything else, like these studio monitors, that whole system right there. It, it powers everything. And the reason I have it set up that way, and the reason I have it set up that way is because I don't always need these interfaces on. I do need the studio monitors and everything else on pretty much every single day. It's just these interfaces, I don't need them on every day, and I don't want them to just be on all the time. So, this interface, or this power conditioner powers these two interfaces, and this just powers everything else. So, at the flip of a switch, I have power going just to what I need and nothing more. That's why there's two, two power conditioners. But, that switch is like my favorite, <laughs> favorite thing in the whole studio. Just because like there's some power behind, like there's some literal power behind it, but like you have to like push, like really push to turn it on. It's just, it's very satisfying. Much better than, than a light switch or this little light, light that's behind you. This thing is literally just, I touch this. It's really cool, but it's nothing compared to a good switch. So it's uh, it's it's tomorrow. I actually didn't shoot. I didn't shoot anything the rest of the day yesterday, just because we were trying to trying to keep it chill. And I just figured I would kind of lump yesterday's vlog and today's into into one. I hope you understand. We're also at the car dealership getting our red car worked on. Uh, it's it hit 100,000 miles and it just needs like the whatever that I don't know what that entails, but it needs whatever that entails. Also a, a quick update on the the sugar. I I failed yesterday. I had sugar. She Savannah made this like really good like what, what's it called? Like it's like this dip, but it's like sugar dip with chocolate chips and crap with animal crackers. I ate a lot of that yesterday. I'm trying. <laughs> Okay. 
okay, we just got home. And uh, it honestly, it didn't take that that long from the Toyota dealership. They're actually, they're the ones in Murfreesboro, not in Nashville. Um, we go there just purely because the service is always amazing. <laughs> Okay, I wanted to talk about a short that I, I posted, and I've got a couple of uh, I've got a couple of, of comments, and uh, I thought the conversation was pretty pretty good. Like I enjoyed it, so I figured I would include it in today's video. So it has to do with uh, that guy right there, the kick drum, specifically kick drum beater, and how you how you play the kick drum. So technically speaking, you're supposed to hit the, the, when the beater makes contact with the head, it's supposed to bounce off. It's not supposed to dig in. And yeah, just because like, if you think about it, if you're, if you play a snare drum or a tom, you're not gonna, you're gonna let the stick bounce off instead of just digging in. If you, if you dig in, it's gonna sound like crap because, and it's gonna choke the drum. Same thing with the, the kick drum. And for me, for years, I would always just bury that beater and I wouldn't bring it back. It was only when I started recording and I noticed that my kick drum sounded really choked and it didn't sound open or like there wasn't a lot of air passing through it or it sounded, it just sounded thin that I started doing some research and lo and behold that for me that fixed the issue. Like if I just, if I hit it and it bounces, bounces off. The three ways that I demonstrated was one, heel down and two, heel up ways. And for those of you that don't know, heels down when you're playing is your heel stays on the ground. <laughs> you're just using that part, the front part of your uh, of your of your foot you're not using that your like leg muscles or the weight of your leg at all and then heels up is obvious like your heels are up and your foot is going like that on the pedal both have its place and I actually use heels down and heels up depending on the situation and the vibe and that's what I'm going to talk to you about today so like I said though you don't want to bury the beater at all like that would that last I don't do that anymore I do a modified version. So basically what I do when I'm doing heels up, I'm going to hit the drum and let the beater bounce right back. Like in, I think it was the third, third version of me playing. And basically what that does is that gives me a nice strong like strike on the drum, but it also takes the beater right off so the drum can naturally like resonate and just it, it sound it doesn't choke the drum out I'm trying to think of a way to like describe what it sounds like it just and it literally it's choking the drum so it'll sound like it's choked so I did that pretty much 90% of my playing is is playing like that way with the heel up and hitting and letting the beater bounce off the other 10% of the time is going to be when I'm doing my heel down there's a couple of reasons that I would choose to do that versus doing my normal heel up with the kick drum bouncing off. The biggest one is going to be just volume. It's basically gonna come down to volume or vibe. And I'll explain both of those. So volume is kind of self-explanatory. If I'm like in like a jazz kind of setting or just like elevator music-ish kind of thing, then I'm gonna play with my heels down. Typically, I'm not doing anything crazy with the kick drum anyway, so I don't have issues with like having to get quick notes or anything like that. And it just, it brings, it's, the volume is just much lower. I'm typically typically doing heels down with like a cross stick and like a couple of like light hi-hat things, like very like linear type of, type of groove. And for the vibe, it kind of goes with like the super low key, like elevator loungy <laughs> kind of thing. It, it just fits that style of music because the last thing that people want when you're in a lounge or whatever, you don't want to hear a big massive kick drum and massive drums something that's just gonna be present and giving time, but you don't want it to be overpowering. That's pretty much it. Like I said, I use two of those. I never bury the beater anymore. Um, if you do bury the beater and you're finding that your drums sound thin, then I really encourage you to mess around with letting it come back off and see if that's a, uh, if that fixes it. Like for me, like I tried tuning and I tried like, I even tried different beaters and stuff, but <laughs> It all like kind of helped, but really didn't get to the root of the problem. The root of the problem for me was I was choking the drum out. And once I stopped doing that, all my issues were pretty much resolved. If you have a different way of playing drums, let me uh, let me know. I'd love to, I, I like trying different ways to play the drums just cause I think it gives you different inspiration and it, it, it just basically broadens your horizons and lets you like learn the instrument in a different way, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay. Sweet. You know, it's been, it's been really warm the past couple of days. So we're, we're leaving for California for 14 days, 15 days tomorrow. 
And that's the longest trip that we've been on in, in a while. All of our trips recently have just been like, literally like at the most, like I think it was like six days or something like that. And if I'm being completely honest, I, if I had to pack or if I had to choose between packing for a shorter trip or a longer trip, I'll pack the shorter trip all day long because the longer trip requires more planning. And if you know me at all, I, uh, I don't plan very well. It may sound like I'm complaining, but I'm, I'm, I'm not. It's just, there's so much, <laughs> there's so much stuff involved that, uh, I also overthink, so that probably doesn't help the situation at all. Just remember that I actually never took, I have to take a thumbnail photo for today's, today's video because I'm not going to be here to take, I need to do it right now. Thumbnail. I was telling them that I, uh, you, you helped me pack because I'd suck at packing over for longer than like six days. Mm-hmm. He wanted to pack one shirt and four pairs of pants. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> because he wanted to buy more pants, or yeah. buy more shirts. <laughs> but he'd get there and say, I don't have anything. It worked last time. 